Hello everyone and a very good morning to all of you. I hope you all are doing great. So we must take care of ourselves during this harsh situation of COVID-19 and without the availability of any vaccine, we can only take precautions to safeguard ourselves from this deadly virus. Now social distancing is one of the most recommended precautions by doctors. We should maintain a safe distance between each other so that the virus does not travel from one person to another. So in this session today, we will show you how you can make your own social distancing smart glasses using Arduino Nano. Now these glasses will warn you if you get closer than one meter to a person. Now and these will help in ensuring that you maintain safe distance every time and everywhere you go. So now every time you go for shopping or work, you'll just wear these glasses and you'll never forget keeping safe distance. So let's begin by briefly describing what the assembly is. So the assembly is basically a smart lab based in N5 since December of 2014 and over the course of over 6 years we have successfully delivered over 250 free workshops. Now these workshops are divided into 3 categories, code, hack and data science workshops. Now the workshops that are related to coding and include software projects, APIs or gaming etc fall under the category of code. Workshops like today's which focus on the hardware, IoT etc come under the category of hack workshops. Lastly, all artificial intelligence and machine learning workshops come under the category of data science. Our target audience are students, professionals and entrepreneurs. But anyone who is interested in our workshop is more than welcome to join us. You can know more about us on our forum which is members.theassembly.ae. Don't forget to connect with us on our social media, connect to us on Facebook and YouTube at The Assembly and connect to us on Twitter and Instagram by using our handle at Make Smart Things. Now how do these smart glasses work? So how will they know when a person gets too close or let's say less than 1 meter close to me? How will the glasses know? Now that's done using a sensor known as PIR sensor which stands for passive infrared sensor. Now these sensors allow you to sense motion and they are always almost always used to detect whether a human has moved in or out of the sensor range. Now these sensors are quite cheap and low powered and also small so that's why uh, they are used in most of our appliances or gadgets at home and businesses. Now these, these sensors also have the advantage of having a very long range. They have a range of up to 7 meters and they capture an ang area of up to 120 degrees. So they capture an angle of 120 degrees. And they are also referred to as PIRs, passive infrared, pyroelectric or IR motion sensors. So these are just the different names that people like to call them. And now these PIRs are basically made up of pyroelectric sensors which can detect levels of infrared radiation. And as you might know, everything emits some low level infrared radiation. And the hotter the things get, the more radiation they emit. And we as humans also emit heat from our body which is around 37 degrees. So we also emit infrared radiation. So that's how the sensor will know that or the sensor will detect a human. Now as for the parts list, we will be using these devices um, and Arduino Nano, PIR sensor, buzzer, batteries and a 9 volt connector or any other battery that you want to use. You may you want to use LiPo batteries or you may want to use a power bank that is totally up to you, you can use. Now in this session, I will be showing you two ways of making the glasses. Now one way is to connect the glasses with a buzzer so that when you get closer to a person, the glass will give a beep sound so that you know that you are too close and you need to move back. The other way is we can connect it to an OLED and we will get 
a written error message showing us that we are too close to a person. So, I will show you the code and everything for both of them and the codes and everything and the wiring diagram are there in the description below and if you have any doubts within that just leave a comment below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Now for the wiring diagram this is the wiring diagram for the one with the buzzer and we will go and you can go through it and we will wire our circuit exactly in the same way. So what are we waiting for? Let's begin. Let's start making our own smart glasses. Okay, so let's begin the wiring. So here we have an Arduino Nano and we have a PIR sensor and we have already connected it with the jumper cables and we also have a buzzer and also connected with jumper cables. So the wiring is pretty much simple as you can see on your screens the wiring diagram is there but if it's not visible enough you can download the actual wiring diagram from the description below. So let's start by wiring the PIR sensor to the Arduino Nano. So the PIR sensor has three wires. So the first one is the VCC which goes into the 5 volts on the Arduino Nano and the second one is the digital pin that we want to write uh, the digital pin so it will go into D5 in our case and the last pin is the ground pin so we will wire it to the ground of the Arduino and we are all set up with the PIR sensor. Now second thing is we need to wire this up and connect it with the Arduino. So there are two wires the red one and the black one. So the red one goes to the D10 pin on Arduino Nano and the black one or the other one simply goes in into the ground cable. So let me just put into the ground. So there are two ground pins on your Arduino Nano. So you can put one ground into the PIR sensor and the other one you can connect it to the buzzer. So that's it that's how simple the wiring was. I'll also show you how you can wire the uh, wire your setup for the OLED. So this was if you want to connect it using a buzzer and you want a beep every time you get close enough to a person. So I'll also show you how you can wire using an OLED. So for the, dis the difference is that for OLED you will remove the buzzer and its wires from your Arduino board. So I'll just remove it for the time being, keep it aside. And here we have an OLED. It has four wires, SDA, SCL, VCC and ground. So what we'll do is we'll connect the SDA, SDA cable to A4 on our Arduino Nano and we will connect the SCL cable to A5 on our Arduino and as for the VCC and the ground we will connect the VCC to the 3.3 volt input that output that we have the from the Arduino. So right next to D13 on your Arduino there is a pin called 3V3 just plug this VCC cable into that. and the last thing is the ground cable so you can just add it to the ground on the other side of the Arduino. So that's it we are done with the second one as well. So this, these two are the ways that you can use to make your smart glasses. You can either have them using, a, a OLED, using an OLED screen or using a buzzer or you can even go ahead and 
combine both of them into one and make that but then you'll require a breadboard for that and I'm not going to go through that but if you want you can try and let me know in the comment section if you try about that alrighty so we're done with the wiring and now let's proceed to write the code for the magic to happen so let's start by start up by opening up your Arduino IDE and create a new project and name it whatever you want I just named it social distancing glasses so the code for we'll type in the code first for the the smart glasses with the buzzer the code is pretty simple straightforward and it's very easy however if you want to download the code or copy the code the link is there in the description below you can download the codes from our github repository so we'll begin by defining our PIR sensor and the buzzer sensor along with the pins that they are uh, refer, referred or associated with so let's start so we'll say hashtag define and we'll name our sensor we can you can name it anything I'll just name it PIR and then you have to give in the name of the digital pin that you have assigned it on your Arduino Nano. So in my case, I have assigned it to digital pin 5. However, if you decide to change the pin or you want to change it to 6, 7 or let's say any other number, you can, when whatever, the, this port has to be the same the, as that on your Arduino board. So if you assign this or join this port to let's say D10 on your Arduino, then you have to type in the 10 over here so let's do the same for our buzzer as well I'll just name my buzzer buzzer and it was attached to d10 on the Arduino so I'll just type in 10 over here and then we'll create a void setup method and this as you might know this setup method runs once when the pi star or the Android Arduino starts up so in here we'll just type in what type of pin mode is our PIR sensor so we'll say PIR and we will give it type of input so it is an input type so that's it and finally we have the loop method so loop method is the method that will keep on running over and over again and that's why we write the main part of the code in the loop so we'll first read the data from the PIR sensor now this PIR sensor if it senses something in its range it gives a value of 1 otherwise it gives a value of 0 so it's very simple to test it's a simple if else statement that checks whether or not uh, it has detected something in its range so we'll do that so in order to do that we'll create a variable int we'll just name it check equals digital read and then we'll give in our sensor name so we named it pir i'll give it pir whatever you named it you give it that and then we'll type in a simple if statement so we'll check if a is greater than or equal to one so then what we will do is we want the buzzer to beep for let's say uh, 0.1 seconds and then stop or you can change this duration of the beep according to your own preferences you can change it to maybe you want to play some kind of a tune or something like that that's totally up to you whatever you want to do feel free to do that so we'll check if the value is greater than 1 then then we want to turn on our buzzer so we'll digital write and we'll give buzzer and we'll give it a high and make sure these high and other keywords like low input you type them as all caps and once we like switch on the buzzer we want to delay it for around 100 milliseconds so this amount over here will determine the length of the beep so if you make this shorter the beep will be shorter and if you make this longer the beep will last long 
that's it and once we have delayed it for 100 milliseconds we want to turn it back off so that we don't get an ever ending beep again we'll type in buzzer and this time we'll give it a low signal so we'll turn it off so yep that's pretty much it that's barely 10 lines of code and you've got yourself a smart glasses to prevent you from getting too close to a person or and to maintain your social distancing so let's go ahead and try and run this code so i've got the arduino here i'll just plug it into so we've attached that pin back to d10 and we'll plug in our arduino board Okay, it's, it lights up and we'll upload the code. So we'll go ahead and we'll upload the code. Hit upload. Okay, it says A was not declared in the scope. Okay, my bad. I said A, but actually my variable should have been check. So let's make it check and upload the code again. So it will first compile and once it checks, verifies the code, it will upload. So as you can see, the code has been uploaded successfully. So if I wave my hand around in front of the PIR sensor, it will start to give a beep. So now you can plug this in or set up this with your smart, uh, what you call glasses or anything so that once you wear them and every the people come in closer than one meter, you, you will get a beep every time. So that's it for this one. Now let me show you how you can, if let's say if you want to have the OLED screen connected to your Arduino, how you can do that. So let's begin the coding for the OLED smart glasses. And what we'll do here is first we'll go ahead and include the required libraries. So first thing that you need to make sure is you need to head on to the sketch tab and go to include library and then there you can search for Adafruit SSD1306. If you do not find that library what you can do is go to manage libraries and there you can search for that library which is called Adafruit SSD1306 and you can install it from there. So if you say Adafruit SSD1306 and type enter, here you get one. So you have to just click install here and it will get installed and it will show up in your libraries. So we'll just go ahead and add them. So we can add them from directly from here or we can also add them manually. So it's up to you what you want to do. So let's just add them from here. So here we have the libraries, but we don't want this and we want some other libraries as well. So we'll include them. We'll say include and then angular brackets spi dot h then include wire dot h again include now this one is a pretty long one okay it's also associated with the adafruit so adafruit underscore gfx dot h now this library will whenever you go to install the adafruit ssd1306 it will ask you to install this library together with it so make sure you do that or if you haven't done you can install that manually as well and again we'll define like previously we'll define our uh, pir pin so okay i just changed my keyboard sorry for that and we'll just go ahead and say define PIR 
and 5. So, this 5 actually refers to the pin that it is connected on the Arduino and then we will also define this our screen width and screen height. So, over here we are using a screen width of 128 uh, pixels and 32 pixels in height. So, you can give this according to your OLED, but most probably you will have somewhat similar. There are two uh, types of OLEDs, one which has 32 pixels in height and the other one has 64 I guess, but in either case just make sure that you choose the correct width and height for your OLED, otherwise the code will not run. So, then type in using all caps so screen underscore width 128 and again we will define the screen height. So, we will say screen underscore height space 32. Now, we will give the declaration for the OLED display that is connected to I2C. So, we will give it, we will say define OLED underscore reset and then we will give it 4. Lastly, we will say add a fruit underscore SSD 1306 space display and semicolon to the end screen underscore width comma screen underscore height comma ampersand wire comma OLED underscore reset. So, these are the things that you must do in order to use whenever you want to use your OLED. So, these are kind of like uh, the standard for whenever you want to use your OLED. Now, we will go ahead and create the setup method. So, as I said earlier the setup method runs only once. So, we will just put in the code that we want to run once. So, we will say display dot begin. So, uh, display is basically the name of our OLED. So, whenever we say display we, we, act, we are actually referring to our OLED. So, display dot begin and then we will give in parentheses SSD 1306 underscore switch cap VCC comma 0x3c. And then we will go ahead and say display dot clear display. This is just to make sure if we have any text from the previous time we ran the code or the LED, it clears everything off. So, it, in the time of startup, it clears all the previous information that is there on the OLED. And then again, like pre previous time, we have to give the pin mode. So, to our PIR sensor, we will give it a pin mode of input. So, we will say PIR comma input and then we can also define the size of our display. So, we can say display dot set size. Now, I will give it a 2, you can change it according to your preferences, but 2 is kind of like ok for this because the screen itself is very small. So, 2 is more than enough for our case and you can also change, give the text a color. So, I will just give it a white color, but you can go ahead and change the play around with colors as well. So, display dot set text color and I will give it white and make sure this color is in all caps white. So, that is it for our void method or 
we can do something else as well. So, we can say and this is something important that we want to do. So, display dot set cursor. So, we want to make sure that the cursor is at the beginning of the pixel. So, the cursor is at the 0th pixel. So, that when we write in or type in text it goes from left top left to bottom right. Okay. So, we will say set cursor and then we will pass in 0 0. So, we want it to have we want the cursor to be on 0 pixel in length and width. So, 0 0 top left corner and we can say display dot print. So, this is the line that actually prints stuff on the OLED screen. So, this is kind of like booting up screen because this is a setup method it will only run once. So, the text that you want to run once whenever your uh, device starts up. So, in, in my case I will just and this has to be within double quotes. So, I will say the the assembly ok and an exclamation mark. You need to uh, you need to play around with this a little bit so as to make sure who, what type of or how many characters that are fitting in your screen and all of that. So, do that and then once we are done with this we can say display dot display. Now, this method is very important you do not ever forget this because even if you give the print command. So, you say display dot print, uh, but you have not said display dot display it would not show up anything on the OLED. So, this line is very important whenever you say a print command then it needs to be followed by the display method as well. So, we are done with our setup method now let us go to our loop method which will actually display warning signs for the user on the OLED based on the input from the PIR sensor. So, much of the code is the same as the previous time I mean the previous case with the buzzer. So, we will just go ahead and type that code. So, int check equals digital read and within the parentheses we pass in PIR. So, this will read the input from the PIR and then we will use our simple if statement we will check if our check is greater than equal to and make sure you do not have space between greater than equal to greater than equal to 1. Then we will uh, if the distance is I mean if the check is greater than equal to 1 that means the distance between the other person and you is less than 1 meter. So, now we want to show a message an error message or a warning to the user. So, we will want to say the to your user that he is too close to the other person and he wants to he should get away from the user. So, we will say again we will type in display dot set cursor so that our cursor comes back to its original starting position and we will say ok I misspelled display and again then we will say display dot print. Now, this is the over here we will type in the message that we actually want to print and there are two print methods one is print and the other one is print ln. So, print ln uh, what it does is after it gets over with the line it I mean if the line is over it then skips another line. So, you will understand when you use this method. So, we will just use print ln for now. So, basically the thing is that print ln leaves a line after it completes and we will type in the message that we want to print in it. So, we will say uh, warning warning exclamation marks and to close ok I spelled wrong 
close wrong as well okay so we are ready and most important thing we forgot display dot display and you can have the okay so we can also write check the else condition so what if the person is at a safe distance so that means if a equal equal 0 or not a check in our case if check equal equal 0 then what will happen then we want to clear the text we do not want to display any text to the user we want to say display dot clear display and display dot display so that the previous text that was there gets removed and that is it we are done with this. So let us go ahead and verify this code first let us verify ok it gave us an error it is because we got the method wrong so it is not set size it actually should be set text size and um, yeah so one other thing that I noticed is I spelled display wrong I got it diaply so just change it back to display and verify the code again I hope we do not get it any error this time yes we do not get it and let us upload the code to our Arduino. So and yeah one thing that I forgot to do is over here in the void method in the setup method we forgot some code so let us just add that because once we print this the assembly we want it to be there for some time so we will just add a delay of 2 seconds and what we want to do is that after we delay I mean after we display the assembly we also want to clear the display back so that when we get the warning message or the next time there is something on the LED screen it won't overlap with this and print some garbage. So we will just say display dot clear display and finally we will say display dot display. and again we will just verify the code and if it is successful we will upload it. So we will upload the code back and just notice uh, after as soon as it uploads it says the assembly and it is saying to warning too close because I got close to the PIR sensor. So if I point the PIR sensor to my direction it shows me an error saying warning too close. So this is how it is it will look. So now you can connect this setup to your glasses or you can and the advantage of having Arduino Nano for this purpose is that it is quite small so it can just you can just add it to the your head I mean the glasses stand so you can put it right over here and this PIR sensor can go somewhere in the middle over here and for as so as for the power supply you can use any source of power supply the best one would be to use a lipo battery because they come in different sizes so that so you will be able to uh, accommodate them more easily otherwise you can use any other source of batteries you can use any type of batteries along with the connectors or 9 volt batteries or something and you can make whatever you want out of them or you can even connect the OLED with the buzzer with the Arduino and create things like that. Do not forget to mention any difficulties or anything that you guys create in the comments below and do not forget to subscribe to our channel. I hope you like this video and that is it for today. Like and share our video with your friends so that they also know how easy it is to build your own smart glasses. That is it for today. See you. Bye-bye.